Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another video. On the 6th of November 2023, I had plans to make a video on my most played Gmod Dark RP server. It had been a long time since I made a video on this server, and a couple people had DM'd me towards the end of last year to make a return and I guess say hi. A server once known for a very popular police department in terms of player numbers, not in terms of law enforcement. You can't raid while he's building. That's what I was just gonna tell him. Oh my god. Hosting a multitude of different mini-games and events the players could enjoy, the personalities between players, updates both big and small, staff changes, drama, rebranding, and indeed, it was a time to be alive. And it definitely helped me getting towards that 200 as well as that 300 subscriber mark, I guess you'd say. Orbital servers, or at least its uh, server IP address I should say, has had a very strange run over the past few years. But as of present day, Orbital is struggling to reach even a player count of two, broken only once I had messaged one person to get on, which then snowballed into general curiosity of a few other gentlemen, but that's for later in the video. Most of this video is going to be my personal perspective from the first time I joined all the way till today. So put your seatbelts on, boys and girls, because it's going to be a steep one. It's going to be a bumpy ride, guys. The first time I joined I can specifically pinpoint was back in late March 2021. At this time the server was known as Iconic RP. Slightly before branding the server to Iconic RP, the server was also known as Supremacy Dark RP, but we don't talk about Supremacy, guys. We don't, we, we don't talk about Supremacy. Orbital used to be Supremacy, huh? Yeah, way back. Please go into detail about what kind of supremacy they are talking about. The map was running on a slightly edited version of downtown underscore tits, which is essentially the backbone of Gmod Dark RP as far as I'm concerned. This map is so incredibly popular it ain't even funny. A large amount of OG players as well as myself would come to refer to this time as the good old days, which is not to say it was inherently better than Orbital's major changes that it eventually made, but both times in the server's history, I guess, in my opinion, had their strengths. I just think Iconic RP had its bearings tighter, if that makes sense. I don't have many screenshots of this happening, or clips, because I didn't really have a good enough computer to record, like, anything at the time. All I have for proof is a picture of a door costing way too much because of the inflation of my 100 million dollars. And Lucian actually ended up making a couple videos on his channel, like, ages ago, and they had me in it, doing my Medicare thing. I kinda built a name for myself through my lucrative free Medicare setup in Main Street. Just a short walk ahead from Spawn, I'd set up, like, a what ultimately would make me become the richest player in the entire server through almost 100% of only player donations. I did make a lot of cool friends through this time. They knew me as Zell the Medicare guy, and I would stand idle by the window, literally healing anyone who was low in HP, sometimes from falling from roofs, sometimes from getting punched, but most of the time it was through getting shot. And people really did appreciate it, to be honest. Like, I, I remember this. Like, people did appreciate the fact that I was there and just healing literally anyone who wanted free healing. And I was just, yeah, come here. You RDM'd me in the past? Screw it. I'll, I'll heal you, dude. I don't care. Even to this day, I still remember, like, a bunch of names if I think about it hard enough. We've got Lucian Chair, of course. He's featured in some of my videos. We also have Rocky, uh, known for his cheese. I like cheese. Jimmy Bates. We, uh, we made an album together that never got released. <laughs> Daiko? Oh my god, Daiko. Daiko was this dude who was just known for RDMing people, like crazy. We got Terra, who features in this video later on, by the way. He's a, he's an OG player for sure. Penguin Hat, my Malaysian comrade. Faram, he recorded me doing a terrible freestyle one time. Sinister, who was known for just flexing money on the server like all the time. Wallaby, who was just like a, a medic dude who chilled out with me like all the time. Hexney, Haru, they were the first two to sit on my Medicare's bench. And like, there was a f load of other people, but I, I gotta get back to the video. Genuinely, I, I could, I gotta get back to the video. <laughs> but these were the days, dude. These were genuinely some of the best days. I reminisce on these days. However, just around a couple weeks after I achieved my virtual current dominance through a free Medicare clinic, I, as well as many others, were sidewinded and things were about to turn. This video is sponsored by 
no one. I'm just messing with you. I was trying to come up with like a part two segment. All right, next part. At some point during May 2021, I'm pretty sure, Orbital was announced. A brand new map, a brand new cosmetic system, a PD overhaul, new roles, new player models, new, new, new. It was genuinely exciting. I wasn't 100% sure about the new name at the time, but still, new stuff sounded fun. It felt like a nice progression into the future, hopefully bringing in more players and making the server much more popular. My newfound joy was slightly stepped on, however, uh, upon finding out that the new rebrand was also coming at the cost of the server's entire currency system up to that point. There had been talk between admins and different staff members at the time that players were way too rich. Players were up in the millions through the gambling systems that were super popular at the time as well as just generally players farming the different roles like crazy. Like weed dealer like did crazy numbers at one point. Like if you farm that for an hour you would just be you would be rich. You would just crazy. So coming with the new server and the new map, the staff chose to make everyone start back to around, I think $50,000 or $100,000? I don't know, it's just, at the t it was maybe $30,000, probably it. All you guys need to really know is it was a fraction of what I had at the time, I guess. I had just made it to the top. And my legs kind of got kicked out from under me, to, to be completely honest. Although at the end of the day, Gmod money ain't worth anything, I felt that all the time medicaring and gaining that much money in that period of time was like achieving a... I don't know, it was like achieving a huge milestone through doing something that no one else had tried. It kind of signified something to me. Good merit paid off. Being nice to people in game is... nice. It would have been cool to be able to carry over something into the next major update. But regardless, the update came out. The first time I logged onto the server was a time I could honestly hardly forget. The map looked great visually for sure, but what really caught me off guard was... My Medicare was gone. My money disappearing was one thing, but it was gone. My building was gone. The spot that I had made my own, the spot that I'm not even kidding had people clone what I was doing, which is great, more healing the better as far as I'm concerned, but it was gone. And after a few sessions, I was gone too, for a couple weeks at least. On June the 27th, 2021, I started this cesspool that I call a YouTube channel. My computer got a small but helpful upgrade to its RAM and I figured I'd give making a video a shot and voila, my first ever video. We're so close. Ah! <laughs> no, 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 no. Although not the greatest thing ever, I was kind of hooked, to be completely honest. I then went on and made a poorly edited series where I played through Dishonored 2, and it was awesome. Then I had an idea. Maybe, if I couldn't be the downtown Medicare guy anymore, maybe I could become Orbital's content creator guy. So starting July 6th, I made a three-part series where I just messed around in Dark RP, and it was official. I now have Gmod videos on Orbital, and a few people noticed. I was also playing other games at the time, of course, experimenting with editing different games like TF2 and The Long Drive and Super Smash Bros and Sea of Thieves in the early days and, and many more, many more games. But Gmod would become my most made content since a lot of players on Orbital were taking notice of my videos, primarily. I uploaded a video where I interviewed a few random people on the server, which eventually turned into some of my favourite videos on my entire channel. By 2022, I had three titles to my name on Orbital servers. The Medicare Guy, which some people still remembered me by. Famous YouTuber Zell Tims, which was popularized by Malaysian homie Penguin Hat. Is that the famous YouTuber Zell Tims? And lastly, the Gmod Interviews Guy. Other than Gmod, I uploaded a video titled Using the Broom to Reach Secret Areas in the Long Drive, and with those keywords, it's gone on to be my biggest video on my channel. It's nothing crazy, but it's, it's the biggest on my channel by far. But this video would tell me that Maybe I didn't have to prioritize Gmod on my channel. There are always going to be other ventures out there to partake in, and I don't have to single myself to the, the single lane of Gmod videos, especially Dark RP. But at the end of the day, playing on Orbital was pretty sweet when I was doing my YouTube thing instead of Medicaring. However, the one thing most online communities share is that drama is sometimes inevitable.
A server which coexisted alongside Orbital at this time was Coastal servers. I didn't really play on Coastal too much because the player models mainly. You'd just casually have a dragon like walking down Main Street next to like some tiny anime girl. It was, I don't know, I thought it was a bit weird to be honest. Nonetheless, they were pretty friendly bunch of people in my opinion. I actually had a few people on that server who knew of my channel and were subscribed to me, so I felt I felt kind of taken in the first time I joined. Everyone was really nice. But Orbital, towards Coastal, holy Christ were they toxic, dude. It was insane. Now, Orbital was kind of known for being a bit racist, to be honest, a bit sexist as well, a bit homophobic, uh, anti-furry, you know, I remember the rat epidemic, anti-anime, just like... Of course. Like, of course, you know? Not of course to hating on anime, I'm just saying, like, of course. If you're gonna, have, you know, have this, 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 and, and this, then, you know, of course you're gonna have this one down here. Orbital built, like, a strange stigma for being, like, that server, you know what I'm saying? People who were, like, members of those communities still played on the server, you know? But it was kind of like the Wild Wild West, if I'm gonna be completely honest. And because Coastal was kind of this server that, like, accepted pretty much anything versus Orbital, who was, like, you can be those things, but we're gonna make fun of you for it. <laughs> Naturally, the two kind of didn't mix in a weird way, and the toxicity towards Coastal specifically would brew through mainly accusations. Been on there a few. <laughs> I've been on there a few times, and I have to say, it's something. You know, they al they always seem to have players above the forty mark, no matter the time of day. It'll be four in the morning, and they'll have at least forty people on. Okay. Yeah, when you join the server and walk around the map, you will find nobody. Orbital staff members at the time, not all of them, just some of them, you know, were accusing Coastal of using bots to boost player numbers, making it look more popular than it actually is, and it's kind of a good way to favor one server over another, you know, you want to join the high player count versus the lower player count, I guess, you know? Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not saying they have bots, but you know, it's a bit, it's a little bit suspicious. So, Just, you know, speculation, speculation. Speculation, lots of players. But that wasn't all. Alongside these accusations came threats of DDoSing, flooding server traffic, making orbital servers unplayable. You know, this soured the taste between servers to a degree that I don't think was able to be repaired at all. And with orbital servers having more players than coastal, it was pretty easy to see who was going to win this terrible online drama. It was it was so pointless. It's so crazy how pointless it was. At least from my perspective. Me and Don Cheadle went on there, and Don was trying to pull a Massey, but he couldn't find anyone. <laughs> I also forgot to mention while recording this part uh, that Orbital literally had like players pretty much like sent to Coastal just to pull mass RDMs and just mess with people on that server and then come back to Orbital after they got banned so that also happened too. On February 21st of 2022 I made a video titled The Orbital X Coastal Interview where I asked three random players a series of questions in relation to the other server. I was pretty much trying to poke fun at the drama overall. Other than this interview video, I remember having a chat with the Coastal staff about the accusations and they were genuinely pretty devastated about the whole ordeal. Well, their community has um, certainly made some attempts to uh, make moves on our server, if you will. I mean, they've... Uh... Can come onto the server and mass eat and... Can you stop standing? Saying everything was baseless and there was no evidence, it was all just he said, she said stuff. And it was all just jealousy that Coastal was kind of like coexisting at the time. I don't think I'll ever know if the accusations actually held any merit, but I don't think I'll ever know since not only was this so long ago, but also that Coastal Servers is no longer a server listed in the Dark RP list. Either way, we don't we don't want any beef. That's a hundred percent the case. We just we just want to relax and do our own thing. Coastal is pro peace, but out of the ashes of coastal servers came a new server that would, in my personal opinion, take its place and change everything. The Australian Underground. Audio Jungle. I don't want to get a copyright strike for this song use in this video, so I have to talk over it a bit. TAU was a server I joined for the first time on April 21st. Around a month after I uploaded Interviews 5, I wanted to check out other servers. Coastal was gone, and to be honest, I didn't want to risk another server disappearing from drama. So I joined. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my first ever video 
on the Australian underground. While Orbital and Coastal were having their beef, the Australian underground slowly rose to the top, becoming the ultimate dark RP gaming experience. And I really enjoyed myself, I had a great time, the people were friendly and some people knew of my channel just like on Coastal. I did go back to Orbital for more videos after, I didn't really want to look like I was betraying my OG server or nothing, but that also wasn't the last time that I ended up joining TAU. I kept going back to TAU since it didn't seem like there was any massive drama between the servers or the people overall. Um, everyone was pretty chill, either side. I eventually made a video on Orbital servers, uh, which was a Gmod parody of crime YouTube-styled videos, where I talked to a player named Riley about his urge to RDM people in-game. The video ends with me getting banned for a joke, since I told Faram to do it, I thought it'd be really funny. And I got banned for a week. And then using this period of time of, of this banned week that I had on my belt, I suppose, uh, I went back to TAU to check it out again. During these videos, I got the idea to make the Orbital x TAU interview. TAU and Orbital both had things to say to the other server, but overall I think TAU kind of took the W on this one. There was no bot accusations, which was pretty great, and um, there was no real admin beefs, like specific admin beefs, like there was with Coastal. Orbital mostly complained about the lag on TAU, and TAU mostly complained about, you know, Orbital's natural toxicity. Owner of Orbital servers refused to fuck my girlfriend. TAU and Orbital coexisted relatively peacefully at this time. Strangely, I found that they were more alike than not. Both servers developed similar player bases over time. Maybe TAU just generally has less toxicity on it, but, you know, Orbital was still going to take the cake on that one. Tau number one, tau on top, the Australian underground on top. I made a video that I ultimately found myself privating after a while. The video was titled Peer Pressure and the Naughty Word. And in case you don't know what the naughty word is, what other word starts with N? I'm just going to let the video play out and you guys can kind of see the general gist of the video, I suppose. Is that weird been tying people up and forcing them to say the N word? Yeah. Keep in mind, I hadn't played on Orbital since like January the 21st, uh, which was the Orbital XTAU video. I kind of got busy playing Kenshi, which is a pretty awesome game. But one day I just got nostalgic and I wanted to come back and say hi, make a video, have a good time on Orbital, and I didn't even get out of spawn <laughs> before this happened. Wait, 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 wait. Say the M word. I didn't plan this. Who would plan something like this? You got this, my friend. Ready? Say it. Yep. Three. Two. Yep. Yep. One. Yep. Yep. <laughs> One's up. Go on. Go on. Get fucked. Squeeze it out. No. Oh, come on. <sighs> please. Come on, Zell. Please. Please. Please, Zell. Please, Zell. Please, Zell. Okay, he's gaslighting us. Say it. Please. 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 Every inch of my soul aches until you say the n-word. Zell. Say it. Say it. This instant. Say it. Say the n-word, Zell. Your player model is black, Zell. You can say it. Anyway, time to go play the Australian Underground because at least they won't force me to say the N word. It was time to move on from Orbital servers. Other videos were doing better than Gmod stuff, and I honestly didn't want to run the risk of getting a video taken down for racism from someone in the background that I forgot to bleep or didn't hear them. So YouTube just picked it up and throws a, a thing on my channel, which happened, by the way, from- I, I had a- I had a strike on my channel for like four months. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. At least here you didn't tell me to say the N-word. So I ended up making a couple videos back there, but then I eventually kind of just dipped away from gaming altogether for a couple months, as well as YouTube. Eventually I did come back to YouTube, um, because, I don't know, it's hard, I, it's hard to stay away from it. Plus I really like you guys watching my videos and, and getting likes and comments, that's always fun, you know? If you're watching to this point in the video, by the way, I just want to thank you personally. It does genuinely mean a lot, and hitting the like button does help the video, so if you can hit the like button... <laughs>
<laughs> ah, shilling! I love shilling! Even though I came back to YouTube, I wasn't really making Gmod videos. And if I did end up making a Gmod video, it was on TAU. It wasn't going to be on Orbital. It's been nearly two years since I last joined Orbital, but I don't know, maybe something changed. Any Anything's possible. Maybe things would be different today. And things did change. Alright, so pretty much picking up back from the start of the video, in case you guys couldn't tell, the server is completely dead and empty. I started walking around the server, kind of remembering different areas that I made videos at, and uh, the first place that I stopped by, of all places, was the Fancy Tramp, which was a laundromat, I could only assume, with no laundries inside of it. I recorded my 300 subscriber special inside this building, and um, I don't know, it was, a, it was a good time recording that one, to be honest. It was nice having a bunch of different people sitting down on the couch and just being like, wow, that's pretty good. Good job, Cell. You got 300 subscribers on the worst platform of all time. I'll tell you what, man. If there was only five Cell Tim subscribers on the earth, I am one of them. If there, if there was only two Cell Tim subscribers on the earth, I am one of them. If there's only one Cell Tim subscriber <laughs> on the earth, I'm against the world. If there is zero Zeltim subscribers, I do not exist on this earth. Thank you. I am not God a paid damn. actor. The next place I ended up stopping by was what ultimately would become Medicare V2. Uh, I used this one not really as a Medicare as much, uh, as much as it was more like just to set up a base and have a door to own on the server, I guess. I have a really cool dupe for it as well. It was uh, helped built by a guy named Karim Sheiks, uh, who did it for free. He built me like a studio in the top room, which was really cool. Shout out Yell Tims for sitting at the computer as well. That's pretty cool. If there's one thing I can say for sure right now is that it's pretty hard to heal players when there's no players to heal. I'm gonna try my best to rapid fire some of the next places because I could honestly, I could talk for another half an hour about all these places. Here's the church that has an underground secret boxing ring which I made a video in for approximately 30 seconds before I left the area. This is Whitaker's gun shop. Uh, I remember me and Lucian posted up outside one time for a video of uh, some PD event at the time. The next place that we're gonna head over to is uh, I guess known as the casino now. It used to be known as Club Penguin or something along those lines. It used to have a boxing ring on the inside, uh, but now it's just completely taken and turned into a casino, like full-blown casino. Instead of a boxing ring being the main attraction to this place, it's now just a spinning car, I suppose. It's, it's kind of cool how it spins though, I'll be honest, it's kind of cool. Obviously because it's been updated in that one year and 11 month period, a lot of stuff has been added to the server. Uh, this IDEX system, I have no idea what that is. Uh, there is a massive beach area which I had to go and check out for a second here. It's just, it's so huge. What is the point of having this whole area? It's just, it's just massive and no one's ever gonna come over here. Even if they want to go for a delicious, nice cold swim. This spot here was the location which uh, had planted guns for Riley Rayner to go on his mass RDM spree. I don't know how the guns got there, but you know, whoa. This area used to be known as the industrial area. It's been updated to be much more big than it was before for some reason. This is the Eastern Waterworks building. I remember there was a lot of like base dupes for this specific building. Over here was the elevator which takes you down to the underground area where miners could go mine rocks and stuff and I guess make some money off of that. Uh, I was about to go down but then I just realized that going... it's just boring. It's just super boring underground. I don't want to make a video going down there again. This place was known as the residential district or the residential area. Um, it's had massive updates, but the mansion has stayed the same pretty much since uh, the first update, if I do remember correctly. Just around the hedges over here was the playground that... It's gone. It's been changed. The, the playground which I filmed Riley Rayner walking around on is now gone and changed for this garbage. What is going on, dude? Just through this tunnel leads over to the foresty area. I guess the original foresty area. It's been turned into the oil grounds for the oil roll. You can go like take oil out of the ground and make money. I think they look terrible. And uh, I don't know, I think the place kind of just doesn't look as good as it used to.
This was the area that I ended up doing interviews for inside of. Uh, it was away from the main spawn area, so people wouldn't minge unless they would have to run all the way back. And I would build my setups all the way in the back of these massive warehouses, which I really loved, actually. I think they were a great place to just, like, mess around with building whatever props you wanted to make and just have a good time, to be honest. I reopened my advanced dupe, and uh, I wanted to see if I had any of my old school dupes uh, still here. And I actually found out that I still have the Interviews 3 setup. So I kind of just placed it down to have a little gander at what it used to look like, and um, yeah, it was amateur to say the least, but it was pure, to be honest, it was pure. I kind of just took myself up behind the counter as I did once, and um, yeah, reminisced on the first big video I made on my channel. Over here is the Bank of Jim. I remember I uh, made a video where I put the thumbnail on top of those stairs over there and I kind of just gazed at the cesspool, as it were. I used to play a little bit of SWAT on the server, so whenever the bank got raided, uh, typically I was there to uh, minge and heal people and try my best to snipe from a distance because uh, that's what you have to do, I guess. Around the corner over here was another place that was a very popular area for people to build bases inside of, especially raiders, of course. Here's the other Medicare that is just so far away from a spawn it's pointless. Here is an entire segment of the map that was added and it was, it's just a giant forest. And it's so pointless, it was just, no, no one used it. It was so, I'm not even gonna bother going in. Over here is, I guess, uh, the Liberty Mall, uh, which used to be like the entrance to the event room, but now it's been turned into this just over the top raid base, I guess you could call it, with an elevator to back it up. Something tells me they had big plans for the mall, but I don't know, it's just, it's so far away from spawn, it's just pointless. Or like, imagine dying and having to run all the way back here, it's just, it's annoying. Over here is an updated version of the PD compared to the one I used to know, but it still kind of looks similar-ish, I suppose. I, I made a good few videos in this area. PD is located directly out front of spawn, so being a policeman on this server was just the best, because you could just go straight back to your base after you die, it doesn't even matter. I used to leave all the doors unlocked inside this place. I thought it was hilarious just seeing people handcuffed, like, walking up and down staircases and stuff like that. I don't know. I didn't even end up looking at the entire map, but I could, you know, I could continue. I seriously could if I wanted. All these little moments from what feels like yesterday aren't exactly gone, but it sure does feel kind of, I don't know, lifeless. It got to a point on the server I was not sure if anyone was actually gonna come on to the server at all for an interview. I ended up standing back at spawn and just staring at the orbital logo from across the room like it was some... I don't know, like it was some soap opera. Eventually I went back to the area just out front of the spawn room and my original idea was kind of just to like sit on these chairs while I wait for literally anyone to join so I could ask them some questions in relation to the server. But of course, no one came. After an hour of waiting, I figured I'd leave, but I couldn't just end off the video like that. Ending a video with no interview at the end would be like ham and cheese with no bread, so I did the next best thing. I DM'd an OG who was online at the time and told him to join. But weirdly enough, whilst Big Man Terra was joining, someone else came to the seats first who just so happened to be staff on the server. And so the interview started. Um, I'm gonna disappear from the Room of White for a little while. I'm gonna kind of just fade into the background over here or something. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna let the interview segment play and when it's done, um, I'll be back. <clears throat> Hello, Andrew. Hey man, what's going on? Yeah, nothing much. Just been waiting a, an hour and 20 minutes for someone to join. Oh, that's not very good. I want to welcome you to the seats in the middle of the streets. Andrew Vape. So, you're an Orbital staff member. Ah, yes. What exactly do you do on the server? At the moment, uh, not a lot, man. Uh, kind of just, you know, show up every six months and say hello. What got you into orbital servers? What was your What was your big start? Um, I used to play Gary's Mod with my uncle. Um, he got me into the server, and then I kind of stuck around and kept playing while he went off and fucked some chicks. I stuck around here and applied for staff. What's your opinion on the server currently? 
as you can see, it's pretty fucked. Who plays on this server? What are the what's the player base of this server? Um, the player base is non-existent. Do you maybe have any idea how this may have happened? All the all the senior stuff kind of moved up and got a bit more relaxed, and then you know new stuff tend to be a bit Nazi, like they'll they'll get you for anything. <laughs> what do you hang on? So by by Nazi you mean like uh like like bossy? So I mean I call it Nazi stuff, but just like very very what's the word for it? Like they'll punish you for anything. Like they won't really let you off. If you know what I mean? They like won't... you make a minor mistake and you get pinned for it. Like you'll get one staff member that'll you know fuck you around, and then there'll be one that'll just be like, yeah, don't do it again. Uh, when did this happen? When did the server properly like like die like this? Could you pinpoint the time? About about three months ago, since Gary Newman got into the staff manager position, he kind of fumbled. Just the just the way the the staff team was run, there was a lot of um. How would you put it? Um, very, very interesting relationships with the man um, over over the whole staff team. Some people liked him, some people didn't, and uh, some people fell out. And then just lots of miscommunication and certain staff members, you know, some people didn't like each other. And then actions were taken more harshly on the people he didn't like to the people he did like. Uh, when was the last time like a new player joined this server? Um, I'm not actually sure. I mean, I can check logs and I can find out. Do you mind? I'll quickly check for you. It doesn't specifically tell me, but there is a player from the United States two hours ago. So I'm guessing he was a new player and he's just joined. Two hours? So you're telling me I, like, just missed this guy? You just missed him. He connected at 5.52 and you connected at 6.18. Let me math through. Like, 24 minute difference? Something like that? Ah, uh, yes. Oh my god, dude. Players falling off. What, what do you think was the reason for that? Gary's mod dark up here as a whole, man. Um, like, you can, you know, scour across, you know, Gmod servers back in the day, and there'd be, you know, four, five, five, ten, you know, dark RP servers, and they'd all have a fair fair amount of players, but nowadays there's only normally one, uh, which is normally TAU, and they're normally above, you know, sitting about the 40 mark. What do you think TAU has done that, that has been different to what you guys have done on this server? The whole aspect of Dark RP, they've kind of done a different route, you know, with cars and going more for the 5M style, when we wanted to stay more generic to, like, OG Dark RP, like Iconic. Terry, you can join do in on the... Do you want to sit down next to me, Yeah, Tara? man. You can join in on the conversation, Terra. Hey, guys. So, Terra, what do you think of this server? Um... It's been going on for too long, I feel, because Gmod in general is pretty dead, but... Because we seek to stick to the authentic, you know, the, the authentic experience, but the guest players just don't want. Because they want something better. They want to roleplay as custom jobs. They want to play with cars. They want to play with this and that. And yeah, I think man. that's what we're missing. Oh, but wait, hang on. The, the TAU. Hurts. Sorry, sorry. The TAU has, and you guys don't. Or um, I guess yeah, because they get like 60 players a, a day, which is which is great for them. I I really want that to happen. G1 has been pretty bad like player counts but they get consistent players so that says something right that that means the players want that and they have it so yeah the ninjas are essential in the server uh, i mean i love them but at the same time it can get too much for other players too that just trying to show i think when we had like 80 to 100 players these ninjas they sort of made the server active because they were like a big part of the server and I appreciate them for it, but relatively, like they can get a bit exhausting to manage, even yeah. as a staff member, Dude, even as a manager. Out, shout out, shout One, out, Daiko. Yeah. <laughs> da oh yeah, Daiko. Oh my god. <laughs> He's an OG, mate. Yeah, I mean, it, it says a lot. We have one, three players right now, and it's just us, and there's yeah, nobody man. else joining. Take a seat, Ricky. Yeah, jump on the seat, dude. Dude, I've got the whole orbital fucking player base on my couch. This is crazy. So uh, I guess Ricky's the newest guest here. So Ricky, um, what do you think of orbital servers? It's uh, dead. Lower uh, player count, uh, the population probably got bored. Gmod is practically dying as a whole. It seems that Russia has got the uh, <laughs> the uh, upper hand when it comes to Russia. When it comes to what? Population. Oh, wait, hang on, so more like, Russians are playing Gmod than Australians? Even Americans. Okay, uh, so Indigo04, can we assume that you're a, like a 
you're an orbital fan. Are you an orbital fan? We'll say okay, that's a yes. All right. We'll go Andrew first, then we'll go Indigo, then we'll go Ricky, then we'll go Terra at the back. Okay, starting with uh, Andrew, what what do you think could be done to the server? Three things that could, uh, I don't know, maybe b bring it into a new era. I think that a rebrand would be pretty good because, you know, the reputation uh, isn't always the best. It's not the greatest at the moment. We're known for some things and the name would be one thing. Um, definitely a smaller map just because, you know, people get scattered around and the server feels dead. And yeah, probably revamping all of the rules on the server. They're a bit restricting, kind of limited to what you can do. And then you get for, you know, how that is literally the server is to have. Okay, your, your mic's, you cutting, your mic's cutting out a little bit. They're, obviously, you, you, you know, you want to walk, right? And if you're fucking banned from walking, what's the point of walking? You know what I mean? Wait, you people get banned fun, for fucking you know? walking? What? Ah, uh, yeah, I ban them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so what was that? A, a rebrand, a uh, different map, and then what was the other one? A revamp of the rules. Uh, rules. Okay, so just like kind of a clean slate on three different fronts. So a big, big part of the server. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, next, we'll go to Indigo in the back. What do you think? Three things that can be done about the server to change it up and kind of bring it into a new light. Uh, just uh, technical difficulties. He's got to type out his answers. Um, just give him a moment, please, uh, audience. You're shot in the neck in the line of duty. You can't talk. Alright. Haven't been on this server for like one year. Maybe less laws and a more lax... Uh, relaxed stuff approach? Relaxed, right? Yes. Okay, sweet. Nice. Yeah. Oh, is that a flashbang? Uh, so next we're going to move over to Ricky. Uh, what do you think? Three things that the server could change to maybe bring it into a new era. The three things were uh, the re uh, reverting uh, staff ranks. It's one, two, summarizing, uh, basically making the map smaller and three making the server more engaging by uh, relaxing the perfect that was good those are good three actually um and then i guess last but not least uh terra what do you think three things that could hey, mate. yeah change up the server well first i would agree with ricky a smaller map like downtown would definitely you know uh endorse more interaction with the players that's something that we lack and has have been lacking for the past, I think, one year. Number two, I would say maybe a little chiller on the rules. Because I remember, I think it was me, myself, that sort of like removed the rule for having like sidewalk buildings and such, and huts. And that sort of removed the interaction from the players. And I kind of regret doing that. But yeah, I would suggest the new management, if they see this, to relax on that kind of stuff. Just let that happen. Because who cares, right? Well, you know, there's not like a rule book of saying this is only the right thing. So just be chill, ask people what they want. Number three, I mean, I would say uh, we need a, a team, right? A better team to develop the stuff for the server. Because back then we had like people that were, you know, that, that were motivated to do enough, like Glitch, Raddy, and so on, right? We had Ricky as well. But now they've just segregated to different things. Raddy's gone. Glitch has been, you know, he's been MIA, Ricky's busy with 5M, they've prioritizing Star Wars RP instead of Dark RP, so that does add a lot of time being wasted, so we need a better no, team, wasted. I guess, just better, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just us now, I mean, this could be a 30 to 40 players right now, I think it'll take like 2 to 3 more months to get Star Wars RP done, then we'll start developing for Orbital Dark RP. So, give or take, you'll see a much more developed server in a year, perhaps. I'm gonna be back so, here in a yeah. year, okay? You better fucking hold your word to Yeah, just do it, yeah. So, I guess on that note, that was, uh, that was pretty much the last part. So, let's get a little outro going. Follow me this way. No! Into the darkness. Yes. In conclusion, 
The server is in a hospital bed and the plug has yet to be pulled. <laughs> okay, it's a bit harsh. We'll switch it up a little bit. It's more like a... Orbital is a really cool looking chainsaw with very little gas in its tank and worn out teeth. A visually appealing yet needlessly large map made by a really cool dude. A staff team in current turmoil and disarray of where they want the server to go. A lack of a development crew being dedicated to the reignition. A rule enforcement considered by at least one staff member to be Nazi. <laughs> and generally people kind of just getting bored of Gary's Mod Dark RP in general. Because Orbital isn't getting any recognition anymore, Chris. You're bad. You're not that guy anymore. And therefore, empty streets. Steam is a huge platform and there are games being added constantly, you know, people are naturally going to jump ship for the next game that looks appealing to them. I put this whole video off for weeks because I got sucked into playing Helldivers 2, dude. But I think it's too easy to say that Gmod is old and therefore its death is inevitable. TF2 has been around for ages and everyone thought Overwatch was going to kill it and look how that turned out, Jesus Christ. But oh, Zell Tims, you can't compare TF2 to Gmod because it's an FPS game and a sandbox game, but I don't care, it's my video. I believe player numbers can fluctuate for sure, but if an active user plays a bunch on a server and then randomly dips for a couple days to play something else, you know, they're eventually probably going to come back if they remember that they had a good time playing on the server, if they enjoyed their time. But if admins are too uptight, if the PD abuses their teasing privileges, if the map is giant and no way to speed up the traveling process unless you're taking taking quaaludes, you can take meth on the server and it makes you run super fast, but that's it. And you can't keep that upon death. And let's be honest, it's just promoting drug use. <laughs> a seemingly undedicated staff team, which to be honest, I don't blame them. It's pretty hard to get motivated for something when you don't have any players playing on your server. And lastly, the unfortunate stigma that was built around Orbital for the past few years as well. The reputation is what it is, you know, you can't, can't do too much at the moment, obviously without a community. I reckon you can. It's very, it's called, yeah, rebrand everything. <laughs> Paint over it, dude. Yeah. When, it, when you make everything. a, <laughs> when you make like a mistake in a painting, you just, you don't, you don't fucking throw away the canvas. You paint over it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, can you do that with a canvas? Yeah, man. You just fucking wait till the paint dries and then paint over it. Who cares? Then you get this nice Facts. like layered and thick fucking thing. And you're like, wow, a lot of effort went into this. And you're like, nah, it's just mistakes and <laughs> redoing it, dude. <laughs> but I don't know. If Australian Underground can thrive after all this time, what's Orbital's excuse? It's ultimately up to what the current staff wants to do with the server, but I have, I've been saying this for a couple years now, but I would suggest a rebrand. You know, just a nice clean slate. What are the chances that this server rebrands, not back to Iconic RP, they can pick something else, but just not Orbital. I think the logo sucks as well. <laughs> can I be real? <laughs> I, remember, I remember the first time I saw that Orbital logo. Orbital's had a good run over the past few years, but it seems clear that Orbital's downfall ultimately was certain. I guess my real question, ultimately with this video, is is Orbital staff willing to put in the sweat to tweak, fill, and rev that chainsaw? We're getting some help from Star Wars RP and then bringing some of them over, like their developer and then a couple of... Uh, you know, new roots. We so, haven't given up just yet. So, so stuff's happening for orbital servers. Yes. Don't know if I can release that, but yes, stuff is happening. And there is shit. It coming. is, but yeah, Star Wars RB gets prioritized because they. Can we have that? You know. Yeah. Can we have that redacted for? <laughs> okay, I'll bleep the whole segment. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. Uh, all the names on my my left here, or well, it's for my right, but it's your left but on the screen right now, uh, is a bunch of names of people that I remember from Iconic. So I'm uh, I'm just putting their names up because I didn't shout them out earlier. Uh, thanks for watching all the way to this point. It's stupid. Gee, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to go ahead and make a 40 minute plus video. It's like 44 minute plus now. Um, so I'm gonna shut up. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Cheers, mate. Goodbye, mate.